Hey everybody, it's Gil here with the Sailing Vessel Dream Chaser, and in last week's episode, we showed you how we were starting to prepare the coach house for eventually fiberglassing the sides of it. If you recall, we removed the decorative teak rings around all the fixed ports, and we started to prepare that surface and those openings to have fiberglass put over them. In last week's episode, we also showed a little bit about um, some decisions we were trying to make around whether or not we put spreaders on the mizzen mast or not. We had a lot of comments on that. The spreaders are absolutely not part of the structural rig on this particular boat, um, and the question really was from an aesthetics and a functionality perspective, were they worth putting up? Uh, so I appreciate everybody's comments uh, and feedback on that. Uh, we did make our decision, and you'll see that in the video this week. But in this week's video, we're going to take this next step. We're going to start showing how the uh, coach house gets fiberglassed. Uh, and honestly, Myers Yacht Service is doing 99.5% of this work. Uh, we're doing a little bit of the labor to offset some of the costs, the items that we feel uh, sort of comfortable and confident doing. Uh, I'm leaving the fiberglass work to them. If you guys are watching our channel, you know I've done some fiberglass testing. Um, I didn't feel like that was up to a quality that I wanted to do structural build work yet, uh, so we, we are re definitely relying on them to do it. But in this week's episode, you'll see that fiberglassing uh, happening, and we also took this opportunity while the uh, mast is down to wire it and add some additional equipment on it. got the boat, and you can see here they've done some work in the uh, anchor well. It's kind of nice. It's glassed over. It's all been glassed with several layers. Um, and it's kind of interesting. Along the edge of the bowsprit, they actually have uh, put down a small piece of, it almost looks like um, starboard. Uh, and framed it out around the Samson post and everything else, probably to run the glass right up against that so that if we ever need to remove that, it's not good <laughs> glass run right into it. So that's good. Um, and then here they've created a, a lip here to angle the water down to the low spot, which is where the drains are. So I like the way this is set up. So it looks funny seeing the, uh, seeing the windows glassed right over like that. It's kind of interesting, but it's dark down below there. But They've got that run all the way up the front of the coach house. Uh, again, multiple layers of chop strand mat, it looks like. That's good. And with the first layer of glass on, you can see how they went around the round ports here as well. Uh, I had all the ports removed except for this one, so they went around this piece here. One of the other things on the gill list was to uh, remove this old belaying pin rack base that was around the main mast. Uh, and you can see in the video here, what I did was essentially took a small uh, portable circular saw and I set the depth to the same thickness as the wooden base so it would cut through that but not go through the deck itself. I removed the screws from the bottom side of the deck that went up through the deck and into this, this piece. Um, and then I went ahead and cut this in four cuts right along the edge of the metal um, mast collar. And the reason I did this is uh, these this belaying pin rack had some screw holes in it that went down into the deck that were eventually leaking. Uh, and what I wanted to do is remove all of this wooden area here so the yard could mast, uh, so the yard could fiberglass right up to the edge of the collar where the opening is going through the deck. This allows me to uh, essentially put a new belaying pin rack on top of that and properly bed it so the places that are through bolted for the belaying pin rack itself are not sources of leaks as we go. For those that have been watching the channel, you know that we have an aluminum, uh, to cut a rig catch, we have an aluminum mast and a wooden mizzen, and we took this opportunity to replace that wooden mizzen with an aluminum spar. While it's down in horizontal, we thought this is a great time to take advantage of installing any equipment we want or need on it, and frankly, you'll see in this video, we also took the opportunity to add some spares that normally you wouldn't have on a mizzen, but listen, it's uh, fairly inexpensive while it's down. Let's do it now, and it just becomes a great spare while we're out. They're going to step the mast here in about another um, week or so. Um, they called us five, six days ago and said in about 10 days they'll be stepping the mast. So uh, we are over here drilling holes in it and running wire. Um, so we're running the wires to a spot just below the, um, the antenna for the GPS. Uh, and we'll run an extra string through there so we can pull the GPS wire out. That's still attached to the boat. So when the mast goes up, they're going to have to pull up a cable for the radar, uh, radar power, and also for the, um, for the GPS antenna. Everything else we can run here. So we have a VHF antenna on the top of the mast and a cable run all the way to the bottom. We have a, an anchor light on the mizzen. It's kind of a spare. We won't use it often, but it'd be nice to have it there in the event the other one goes out. Um, 
And then we also have a 12 volt power going up to where the spreader um, lights will be. I uh, solicited the help of my daughter here to assist me. Uh, because we want to run all new wires through the mast while it's down, we took that first step, which is always a little bit nerve wracking, and that's drilling holes in it. So you see me here actually drilling the hole that is going to be for pulling the radar uh, wires out of. And once the initial hole was drilled, I went ahead and used a tapered widening bit to get to the correct size that I needed. We ended up drilling several holes in the mast for all of the equipment that we were going to have on here. We drilled a hole in the masthead for a spare anchor light. We drew, drilled holes in the upper edge of the outer side of the mast for a new VHF antenna. We drilled a hole for the spreader lights. We drilled a hole to run the GPS antenna and the FM antenna out of. We drilled another hole to run the radar wires out of. And then at the very base of the mast, we also cut two more holes on the side of the mast where the wires will exit the base of the mast and connect to their respective wires. Alright, stop. We got the official cable fisher outer right here, and the official cable rod pusher right here. I'm going up the tube inside the mast. I cleaned up each of the drilled holes using a rough grit sandpaper, rubbing the inside of the hole as well as the outside to make sure there were no burrs there. I had a heck of a time fishing any of the, uh, the line or wires out of these particular openings. Uh, and here's where my daughter Whitney apparently is good at games of chance and carnival games because she had no problem at all hooking the line on every one of these, which immediately turned this job for uh, specifically for her. So every time we were running a wire, I would um, feed the wire feed through and she would extract it with a small fiberglass um, rod that had a hook on the end. Uh, and she did a good job getting all of these things out of here. It saved me a, a lot of time actually. We worked almost all day on this project and made really good progress. While I was running wire, Whitney was putting two coats of epoxy on the small spreaders because we did decide we we're going to put those spreaders back and I'll show you what that looks like in a bit. We ran power to the top of the mast for a spare anchor light and we ran 12 volt power also up to the spreaders to power the spreader lights. We ran a VHF antenna line to the top of the mast and we put extra pull cords in several places in the mast to allow the yard when they step, uh, step the mast back up to actually run the GPS antenna, the AIS and FM antenna, as well as the radar lines back up the mast to their home. I mentioned in an earlier video that this small channel that was between the teak deck and the gunnel was being filled in. I thought you might find this interesting. Uh, I, I had a small camera just kind of showing how they do some of this work. And you can see they're putting a sealant down inside of that particular channel right there along the gunnel. Uh, it's about a one inch or one and a half inch wide channel there. And you can see it's just a small thin piece of foam that's being laid down into that groove. And um, Lionel just kind of carried this all the way down the, the gunnel itself, right, filling in the channel. You can see that yellowish looking material there. Once it was in place, went ahead and put uh, additional, you know, 4200 or Volt Life seal along the edge of that to seal that down uh, against the glass. And again, this is nothing more than creating a shape and a mold that the fiberglass will um, will follow to give it the, the look you want. So. Went ahead and put this stuff on here, and then uh, I'm time lapsing this a little bit. They came back after that was dry, and you know, as as simple as it sounds, and you can always tell somebody that's uh, good at what they do because they make it look easy, despite me attempting this on a, a deck box and not being able to do it this easily. But he has his uh, his polyester resin mixed up, and he's essentially just laying in this you know six or eight inch wide uh, piece here to cover that small channel. You saw it just being pushed uh, gently up against the gunnel and down onto the deck itself. Uh, forgive me, his arm's kind of in the way of the camera here, but um, you know, again, cutting around the deck fill opening, but it doesn't look like rocket science, right? It's just, just putting it in place and then using a roller to uh, adhere and completely wet out that particular uh, fiberglass map. I don't know what the weight is of this mat. It seems thicker than the stuff I was using, like the standard chop strand, not quite as thick as like a 1708, um, you know, sort of biaxial. 
but just goes uh, along the gunnel and then blends it uh, along the edge of that um, component down onto the deck itself. Uh, and then just carries this same thing forward. Uh, I skipped forward a little bit more, and you can see he's taken a bit of woven roving to go around where the deck fill's gonna be. Obviously, once we're done with this, we pop the deck fill back out and sand and grind it all down real smooth and even. But as simple as cutting it around the, uh, the deck fill, and then just like the layer before with a laminating uh, resin, uh, they're just wetting this out with a roller and removing any bubbles on it. Um, once that's done and, and, you know, fairly dry and tacky, coming back with another layer. And this particular piece is a little bit taller. You'll notice that it's going right up to the bottom side of the toe rail. So it's going about an inch higher than the piece was before and about an inch further out onto the deck. And if you think about what that does, it builds up your additional layers with a gradual taper at those um, transition points. So when they come back and lay the, the pieces on top of the deck, if they go right over that top layer, but not quite as far as the bottom layer of that, they'll have a nice smooth surface at the top. So hopefully you found that interesting. Came to check on the boat today, and it looks like they have the first coat of primer on the coach house. I need to call Michael though, because I, I need to make sure these windows get trimmed the right way for the way we're gonna be insetting the glass. See if I can show this. Right now, if I look down, you can kind of see we have the wood here, and then this is that lip where the glass was seated in. So this has to actually be cut all the way down to where the where the glass would sit in. I'm not gonna bolt them on top of that. So I need to talk to Michael about that. Whether I cut it with a router or they do, it's gonna have to be done. You may remember from previous episodes when we had the hull painted, what the yard tends to do is uh, sand and mildly fair the surface and then they prime it. And they do that so they can see the high and low spots. They know then where to sand it, where to put additional fairing on it, and then how to smooth it out. They did the same here. Gil here at Sailing Vessel Dream Chaser. I took a couple of days to travel this week for work. Check this out behind me. Yeah. That is Manhattan. So. In this video, we're going to catch you up on all the work we've been doing on the boat, on the deck, on the coach house, and literally kind of bring you up to speed on where things are today as of January 13th. I don't know else to say this, but man, real ramen? Like ramen from a ramen restaurant? Oh my gosh, is it good. The depth of flavor is amazing. While I was in New York, I took a little t uh, break just to do a little touristy stuff. I went to a National Geographic uh, 3D immersive underwater experience. It was pretty amazing. These are actually just video screens, and the video screens wrap around walls and down onto the floor, and they react to your motion in the room and when you touch the water. It was pretty amazing. So I went by the glass shop today that's doing the new glass for the boat. And I gotta tell you, I was horribly disappointed. I brought them all the windows, the old ones out of the boat, so they could use them as templates. And um, I went to pick them up and the guy offered to help carry them to the car, you know, very generous. And um, I went out to there to grab a couple of them. And as soon as I looked at them, I could tell the two they cut that should have matched didn't match. So I put them on the table and said, let me get the templates. These aren't close. And he's like, well, but there's probably sits in a frame and you have room to, to work around them. Like, no, I specifically brought the glass to be used as a template. It needs to match this exact. Um, you know, I don't, I don't need it to be 100% exact, but I need it within an eighth of an inch. And there were some spots where it was literally an inch off of the old template. It was horrible. Uh, unfortunately, what they told me was, I won't use the name of the company or the person's name because they happen to be the owner, but it was like, oh, I'm sorry, I didn't check this. Um, So-and-so cut it. Same guy whose name happens to be on the building. Uh, so they're going to be redoing it. And I told them he's got to make sure that it matches the templates. His comment to me was, well, you know, without the boat here to look at, it's really hard to see how much tolerance we have. I'm like, well, that's the reason why I brought the glass, so that you could use it as a template. Uh, very disappointed. So anyway, more to come as I uh, go back tomorrow, to hopefully to pick them up as they get done. But on the happier topics, it is Monday afternoon. I just got back from New York City. I was out of town for some work, and I'm gonna go on the boat and see what all has been done. so blue in here on the video but I can tell that um, the primer had been sanded and um, you can tell where they've uh, kind of smoothed it out it looks like they even added a little bit of fairing or filling compound in a couple of small places here looks good so far check out everything else here
They've definitely done some additional sanding along the sides of the coach house. Um, and Deb asked me if I'm down here, make sure I water the Christmas cactus. So two bottles of water, sweetie. I put them in there. <laughs> but certainly still making progress. Uh, it is crazy how much dust there is down below. And there's just no way to avoid it at this point. Nor is there a reason to try and do something crazy to stop it from happening. It's There's a lot down there. Uh, and it's where I put these the plywood panels up. I didn't seal them up against the inside of the boat, so as they're sanding the outside of them, they're just collecting the dust and shooting it right down, down below. So they're definitely full of dirt and dust. Uh, but you know, when everything's done, we'll uh, we'll do some more sanding down below and we'll vacuum away and we'll probably pull 40 pounds of uh, sawdust and fiberglass dust out of the boat. But we'll have to give it a thorough cleaning because that stuff is going to be everywhere, which. You know, in the grand scheme of things, it just means it's time to us clean every single opening, every single cupboard. And while we have it all out, we'll just make sure everything's cleaned, uh, bleached, and painted if need be. You can also see that the, um, the deck fills are back in, so that looks good. They've got them seated nice. What they'll end up doing is taping around those before they paint. So I hope you enjoyed this episode, and if you do, by all means, give it a thumbs up and a like. Share it with your friends. Thanks, y'all. Hey everybody, thanks for watching, and please follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, or even Tumblr. Please take a moment and go over to our website at svdreamchaser.com to download free resources for cruising and how-to projects. Get your thumbs and mouses ready. We also have a couple of links right on the screen for some other playlists and videos that we think you'll enjoy. Thanks for watching, fellow dreamers.